Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on you guys? This is Joseph Conlon coming to you with your Monday Night Raw review for Monday, April 20th, 2020. We had Monday Night Raw again tonight uh, for a brand new week of wrestling. Uh, three qualifying matches uh, that we've got to see tonight. Um... We've seen Alistair Black and Austin Theory. We've seen Apollo Crews and MVP. And we've seen Rey Mysterio and Buddy Murphy. We've also saw the main event, which was being hyped up all night. Angel Garza versus Drew McIntyre. How long did it go? Six minutes. Freaking ridiculous. I'll go over that match. And... Nia Jax. Nia, Nia, Nia Jax. She picks up Kyrie Sane from the throat. And she just throws her. And her head bounces off the turnbuckle and she's sliding down. And then she wants to go on social media and brag about it. So when we get to that particular match, folks, we're going to rant on Nia Jax. And we're going to talk about the tweet that I sent out that everyone is liking. It got 77 likes in 30 minutes. And it's still blowing up as I record this video right now. But we, before we start this video, you guys know what to do. Make sure you guys go check out previous videos that you might have missed right here on the Big Flight Fuel channel. Smackdown review. If you haven't checked that out, I advise you to go check that. And the news and rumors video. We talk about plans for Money in the Bank, uh, NXT releases, and WWE's brand new taping schedule. But without further ado, we got a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's start the Monday Night Raw review right here on the channel. So you got Drew McIntyre saying, Welcome. To Monday Night Raw, a new week. He's talking about he's addressing Seth Rollins and how he sneak attacked him last week, and he tried. Is this was an okay promo by Drew McIntyre, but he tried to make sense of Seth Rollins being the number one contender for the WWE Championship, but. Quite frankly, he had a tough time with it, but that's not his fault, because, yeah, I like that Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins are facing each other at Money in the Bank as it got announced tonight. I'm okay with that idea. Not 100%, but I'm actually okay with the Drew McIntyre-Seth Rollins match. Does it make sense? Not really. Not really. As I came to think about it, not really. So then... Zelina Vega comes out uh, with Angel Garza and Andrei, uh, Angel Garza and Austin Theory. Uh, he says, hi, Zelina. Number one thorn in my ass, Drew McIntyre said. I laughed. That was funny. And then Andrade came around, back and attacked him. And he, Drew McIntyre um, gave him a claymore. Right to the face. So he's setting up to kick the Claymore. Zelina's telling Austin Theory and Angel Garza to uh, go in there, save Andrade. And they're hesitating. And they're just standing there. Like they don't know what to do. So they're just standing there. They're hesitating. They don't go in the ring. And they just watch Andrade get Claymore again. They were made to look like idiots in that segment right there. The segment was okay, but I did not like how they treated Garza and Theory in that segment. They treated them like they were like um, they were idiots. I did not like that whatsoever. We then started off the night with Alistair Black versus Austin Theory. This was the first Money in the Bank qualifier in the night. 
We had Selena Vega on commentary with Tom Phillips, Brian Saxon, and Jerry the King Lawler, and she was the best part of this match. Selena Vega was outstanding on commentary, being the heel, talking down to Byron and Tom Phillips. She was great. It must have been tough for her to have been arguing with Aleister Black and be fakely cheering against her husband. But there was a part in the match where Zelina went to go yell at Aleister Black, like, who are you? Black went up to her and then Theory threw her into the barricade. That was a nice spot. And then we got nice back and forths between Theory and Black. And then eventually at the end, uh, Aleister Black delivers this sweet black mass right to Austin Theory's right neck for the one, two, three. And Aleister Black qualified for the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. This match was very good. Unexpe- uh, not unexpectedly, as expected. This match was very good. Austin Theory played what was great in this match. Selena Vega was outstanding on commentary. And Black continues his winning ways. Everything about this was awesome, I thought. Really good stuff. Now that Aleister Black is in the Money in the Bank briefcase match, um, Aleister Black is 100% your 2020 Money in the Bank winner. No ifs, ands, or buts. Aleister Black competes in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Aleister Black wins the briefcase at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. If not, it will be a creative hiccup if he doesn't win. Shayna Baszler versus Indy Hartwell. Uh, Shayna just beating her up. Uh... Hartwell countering back. Shayna stomps her elbow again and they and they um call for the DQ. Shayna then walks off, grabs a ladder, throws her excuse me, throws her onto the steps and puts her arm in between the two la- in between the ladder and kicks the kicks her arm in between the two ladders. I thought this was awesome. This was great with what they did to Shayna Baszler. They made her look like a freaking murderer out there. And no one is going to stop her. That's what they made her look like. It was... I liked it. And to be honest with you, if they have Shayna Baszler just squashing random women... Stomping her, stomp, stomping their elbow, and co- and stopping the match. I'm okay with that. I'm honestly okay with that because it makes her look serious. It makes her look legit and tough. I love that. Just like Alistair Black, either Shayna Baszler or Sasha Banks is your 2020 Women's Money in the Bank winner. More preferably, I go with Shayna Baszler over Sasha Banks. Then you have Sasha Banks just turn on Bailey, and boom, you got the match set up for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Shayna Baszler lost clean to Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. If Shayna Baszler does not win the Money in the Bank, what's her excuse to get another match with Becky Lynch? She's got to win the Money in the Bank. She's got to. It's my opinion on it. Either Shayna or Sasha. If there's between the two, I'm going with Shayna. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander versus Brandon Vink and Shane Thorne. This was alright. Alright match. Ricochet and Cedric won. They got a nice confirmation of Ricochet's finisher. I don't know what it's called. Into the lumbar check for the 1 2 3. Um, pretty impressive for Cedric and Ricochet. I don't really want to. Spent much time on this, but oh my god, these next two things could take a while, folks. So I might cut down a little bit of the stuff that happened on Raw just to save time. Bobby Lashley flipping tires, freaking horrendous, man. That's horrendous. Like, 
Do they really think that Bobby Lashley flipping tires is going to bring ratings? If they do, that's pathetic. And they're on drugs. So first, we see a vehicle on the road driving. And it's Eric and Ivar in the car. And Ivar has this big gigantic chicken leg that he's eating. And uh, Eric is describing things that what they're going to say. And then after everything they said, they go, Viking Raiders. And then they do it again, Viking Raiders. And then they do it again, Viking Raiders. You guys know the deal. What the heck did Vince McMahon do with the Viking Raiders? What the heck did you do with the Viking Raiders, Vince? Stop playing with me. Stop playing with my mind. Oh my god. This was one of the worst segments on the show tonight. And maybe one of the worst segments I've seen in a long time. <laughs> This is so cringe. Please don't turn the Viking Raiders into a comedy tag team. God's sakes. Why? They're two big dudes who dominate. You see what they've done in NXT. Why can't you translate that onto the main roster? Come on, man. That got me... Like, oh my god. That just threw me off. That was horrible. Oh. Nia Jax. Nia Jax. First off, I feel really bad for Kari Singh that she has to go through this bullshit twice in a row. And this week it was worse. Because instead of Kyrie and Nia Jax having a three-minute match. This week, they had a five-minute match. Which means the longer the match went, the longer we had to see Nia Jax botch in the wrestling ring. And she's not even wrestling with Kyrie saying what I don't even I don't even consider the moves that Nia Jax does wrestling. She's literally just throwing her around like she's a piece of trash. Not taking, she's being unsafe. She's probably hurting her. I wouldn't be surprised if Kyrie Singh got a concussion after that spot. Let me find it. I gotta find this now. I wanna play the clip of. I literally cringed so hard when this spot happened. I literally screamed. Not screamed, but. Felt uncomfortable, I guess you could say. And then Nia Jax goes on social media and she's bragging that she botched. She's bragging that she heard Kyrie sing. Alright, here you go. And then she goes on social media. She goes on Twitter. And says since Kyrie can't do anything about it. Maybe Ronda Rousey would like to try. Simone for real life. This is something that Nia Jax is proud of. Is she proud of the way she wrestles? And the way... She just throws her opponents around like they're a piece of shit. I thought Nia loved the girls backstage. Not counting Alexa Bliss, but... I thought Nia loved the girls backstage. Apparently not, because she's throwing them around the ring like they're a sack of shit. Like they're a sack of shit. Nia Jax, folks. Nia Jax... Is a disgrace to women's wrestling. She shouldn't be near a pro wrestling ring. This is the tweet I'm talking about. 
Nia Jax and a pro wrestling ring. Nia, there's a thing. There's a thing going around in this world called social distancing. I think Nia Jax should social distance herself from a pro wrestling ring. What, what do you think, guys? I, I'm pretty sure most of you are going to agree with me. Because I sent the tweet out and it got 96 likes, 96 likes and 24 retweets. 15 comments in 46 minutes. I mean, I couldn't have said it any better myself. And then we got these Nia Jax. These Nia Jax apologists. Oh, Nia Jax has improved in the ring. She's gotten in shape. Bro, what are you talking about? She's improved in the ring. <laughs> oh man I don't mean to copy off of JD For what he did on the Smackdown review But I'm going to copy off of JD for this One thing Sorry Nia Jax has improved in the ring I will never copy off of JD, I promise. But I had to do that. I just had to. It was in my system. But come on, man. Are you serious? Are you serious? Nia Jax getting better in a pro wrestling ring? She's gotten worse before she left for her double surgery. She is one of the most unsafest wrestlers you could ever work with. She's an unsafe wrestler. Doesn't give a shit. About women's wrestling. She's a disgrace to women's wrestling. And she needs to social distance herself. From a wrestling ring. Forever. Forever. I will throw. I will throw the biggest party. Ever. When Nia Jax retires. Believe me. I will throw the biggest party. In the wrestling community. Once Nia Jax retires from pro wrestling. I need to breathe. I need to breathe. Oh. I don't want to talk about Nia Jax for the rest of the week now. We've seen an MVP versus Apollo Crews. The second Money in the Bank qualifying match. And this was a decent match. MVP actually looked okay in this match. Apollo Crews looked impressive. Apollo Crews. Is one of the most underrated wrestlers that they, uh, they have in the company. He really is. And Apollo Crews uh, picked up the victory over MVP tonight. And I couldn't be any happier for Apollo Crews. He totally deserves this big spotlight. And what bigger spotlight than the Money in the Bank ladder match. Which is one of the most important matches of the entire year on the WWE calendar in my opinion. I think it's important. I think Apollo Crews being in this match, it's good for him. We shall see how he does. Is he going to win? Probably not. He's probably got the least possible chance of winning the Money in the Bank ladder match. But it's good that they're putting new fresh faces in big matches like this. Now the, qu the question's going to be after Money in the Bank. Is WWE going to push Apollo Crews after Money in the Bank? Knowing WWE, I don't think so. But Apollo Crews got the win over MVP, and I'm really happy that he's in the um, ladder match. Liv Morgan vs. Ruby Riot. I mean, I really got nothing to say about this. I wasn't really paying attention to it. I should have been, but the match was decent, I guess. Liv Morgan got the win, and Riot was running to the rope, and Morgan counted it into her finisher. I've said this once and I'll say it again. Liv Morgan's got impressive wrestling skills. She has improved lots. And um, if this means that WWE is deciding to give Liv Morgan a push and maybe a title match in the future, 
Heck, I'm all in for it. Why not? We've seen Buddy Murphy versus Rey Mysterio. The last qualifying match of the evening. And this match was a banger. This match was a banger. This was the best match of the night by far. Rey Mysterio and Buddy Murphy. You can tell already. They had great chemistry together in this match. Rey Mysterio can have great chemistry with anybody, I feel like. And Buddy Murphy, too. Buddy Murphy is seriously underrated. And Rey Mysterio got the win in this match. At first, I wasn't I wasn't happy about it. But after thinking about it, the match was so damn good. I can't shit on this. I really can't. This match was just great. This was a great match. Um... I guess you can have that legend in the latter match, which is Rey Mysterio. And maybe he'll bring a good presence into the match. But Murphy, so underrated, man. He's so underrated. I'm glad he's back. And I'm hoping they give him a mid-card push sooner rather than later. Or a main event push. Probably a mid-card push, but I'm just happy he's back. Charlotte first, Caden Carter. Skipping that, no reason to talk about it. Akira Tozawa versus Andrade. This was fun. This was a fun match for what it was. I said this last week. I'll say it again. Akira Tozawa is very, very underrated. I heard that he won in the Cruiserweight Tournament against Isaiah Scott this week. I did not watch the match, but it just sucks how Triple H has him. In the NXT tournament, he probably had a great match with Isaiah Scott. And he won. And on Monday Night Raw, they are feeding him to Andrade. The match was good. But this is the second week uh, Keo Tozawa is in a losing effort. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Bianca Belair versus Santana Garrett. This sucked. I'm sorry, but I did not. I was not a fan of this whatsoever. The Street Profits yelling and screaming and standing up on the commentary table ruined the entire thing for me. I was like, just come on. I, w I want to see the main event. Just get to the main event so this show can be over. I just wanted the show to be over at this point. The match was boring. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Bianca Belair was really boring in this match. I'm not going to lie. It's just my opinion. Um, I love Bianca Belair, but this match didn't cut it for her. Shantara Garrett looked like a bum. Like she was just a, a local jobber. She bet she didn't hit one move on Bianca Belair, I think. And the Street Profits on commentary was just a pain in the ass to listen to. So, that's my thoughts on that. Angel Garza, Drew McIntyre, main event of Monday Night Raw. Pretty much the same as last week's main event, except Seth Rollins didn't come out. Match went six minutes. Match went six minutes. How, is a, uh, how does a Drew McIntyre Angel Garza match go six minutes when they could kill it on an NXT TakeOver or on a big stage on pay per view? Those guys could kill it. The fact that they're giving six minutes. On the main event of Monday Night Raw, where you could have cut out Charlotte and Nia Jax and Bobby Lashley flipping tires and the Bianca Belair segment. this If you gave these guys a good 20 minutes to prove themselves in the main event of Monday Night Raw, I would have been a happy camper. I would have been a happy camper. So, Drew won this match in 6 minutes with the Claymore kick. And he did a, he said he did a dive over the top rope to all three guys for a big man like Drew McIntyre to be doing that. That is unbelievable for a man like Drew McIntyre with that much big size to be doing that. But besides that, that was the only memorable moment of the match. He claimed Moore's Angel Garza again. Andrade's running off, and Austin Theory hesitates and gets Claymore. You know, whatever. 
This was a really good episode of Monday Night Raw up until after the Rey Mysterio Buddy Murphy that match. After that show went down on a cliff. I'm not saying it was a bad show tonight. I thought it was like I said last week, I thought it was an average Monday Night Raw. Not the best, but not the worst show ever. This just Nia Jax has me so pissed off, man. I'm in a pissed off mood. I talked about Nia Jax for like six minutes of this video. That's the last I'm talking about Nia Jax this week. Jesus. She really is a disgrace to women's wrestling, though. She really is. <sighs> Guys, I'm getting out of here. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Monday Night Raw review. Subscribe right here to the Big Fight Field channel. Big Fight Field channel. Comment down below what you thought of this week's Monday Night Raw. Did you think it was good, okay, or bad? I'm in the okay category for this week. Like this video with a super kick. Um, follow me on Twitter at Colin underscore Joseph. And you can follow me on Instagram as well at Colin underscore Joseph. And follow Eddie on Twitter at Eddie Moans 515. As I'm getting out of here. I'm tired. This three-hour show made me exhausted tonight, and I need some sleep. I'll be back here tomorrow on the channel for your Dark Side of the Ring review. We got Dino Bravo tomorrow night to talk about, so that should be a whole lot of fun. Have a good night, guys. Stay safe.